So I'm Richard Shaw, I'm a researcher at the Institute of Health and Wellbeing at the University of Glasgow. And my presentation today is again using UK Biobank and it's looking at whether loneliness might explain the relationship between living alone and death by suicide and hospital and medicines for self-harm. Now, uh, loneliness is becoming increasing priority over the last, recently, um, over the last 25 years, the proportion of middle-aged people living alone has increased by 50% and UK Biobank of middle-aged people. Now, living alone has been associated with poor health generally and suicide in particular. And a consequence of this, it's now become quite uh, important for the UK government. Um, in 2018, the UK government made it um, ministerial priority. However, there are and some important knowledge gaps in it. Um, most of the assumptions around loneliness being important for death by suicide comes from either case control studies with uh, some flawed methodology or studies using other sort of outcomes such as suicide or ideation. And this is partly because death by suicide is a rare outcome and it requires large studies to investigate it. However, loneliness has not been commonly recorded in large studies. Now, the baseline cohort I've used for analysis is as for UK Biobank. It's a very large study with 500,000 people who are aged between 40 to 70 years at baseline, which was between 2006 and 2010. Um, they are recruited from 25 assessment centres throughout the country. Um, response rate hasn't been great, but it's still a great study to use because it has a wide range of socio-demographic, economic, health measures which should address confounding factors. Okay, okay. Now, in order to assess death by suicide, we're using ministry data from the records. These include death records from England, Scotland, and Wales. Um, we have data up to February 2018 in these analyses. To define death by suicide, we use ICDN codes for potential self-harm and suicidal work ideation and we've also added in those from undetermined cause which is as typically used by the NS longitudinal study. We, despite the large sample we've got comparatively small number of events is around just under 200 men and just under 100 women. The other outcome we're looking at is hospitalization for self-harm. This for the analysis for this come from people based attending centers in England only as we only have a linkage to hospital episode statistics for this outcome. Um, again, ICDN codes for intentional self-harm and person, personal history of self-harm. And there's approximately 500 events for men and a few more for women. Now, in terms of results today, I'm presenting a model separately for each outcome by gender. Um, I'm so, so presenting a series of four models going from unadjusted models between loneliness and living arrangements and the outcomes, which we might expect to general associations and increasingly building up, including socio-demographic and economic factors and adjusting for health at baseline, including sort of factors that might indicate chronic disease conditions or mental illness before finally presenting a model which includes both a sort of living alone, loneliness and emotional support measure, which I don't have time to go into today. Okay, and this is the first result slide. What you see in a panel on the left for men and a panel on the right for women. Um, on the left-hand side, we have a hazard ratios. And on the bottom, we have the risk comparative categories. So people who are alone were being compared to people who live with a partner. And there's a separate group of people who live with others, but doesn't include anybody in a partnership relationship. And then people who are often lonely were compared to those who are not at all lonely. And what you see is quite a range of discussions where, right, sorry. And so for men, what you find is initially an unadjusted analysis, quite strong relationships between all these factors and death by suicide. Um, this reduces somewhat on adjustment for socio-demographic and economic factors and falls further on health. When you add in the final model loneliness, what you'll find is that there's still fairly strong association between all the living arrangements and loneliness and the outcome. An important fact to note is it's not just those who are living alone at increased death risk of suicide, but also those living with partners, which is suggesting that it's the aspects of having a living with partner is just protective against death by 
suicide rather than just living alone. In contrast, and loneliness doesn't explain that relationship and it has a fairly moderately strong relation itself, which is of marginal significance, although we, that might be due to low number of events. In contrast for women, <coughs> we don't see much in what that particularly strong relationships to start with. And what we do see seems to mostly be explained by pre-existing health at baseline. So now I'll move on to the next set of results for self-harm. Again, these are slightly more similar to between men and women than the, uh, the death by suicide. Um, having a, li both living alone and non-partner associated initially with quite a strong risk of postulation for self-harm for men and uh, often lonely is associated with a strong relation for both men and women. As you add in the socio-demographic factors and health factors, the relationships fall down and then finally add in loneliness, what you'll find is that loneliness it seems to explain nearly all relationship between living arrangements and hospitalization for, for men. And for women, the weaker relationships, but for both men and women, loneliness is an important factor, even after adjusting for social demographic facts, health and other factors for hospitalization self -harm. In conclusion, uh, for death by suicide men, having a partner rather than living alone is associated with reduced risk of suicide. Loneliness is related to death by suicide, but does not explain living alone's relationships. For women, death by suicide, uh, none of these measures seems to be particularly important in terms of death by suicide, suggesting that other factors are important and this domain may not be that important in this context for women. In contrast for self-harm, Loneliness is an important predictor of hospitalization so far for both men and women, and may explain the, and loneliness may explain the relationship between living alone for men. So finally, I'd like to thank the UK all the participants in UK Biobank. Um, this project was funded by the MRC, and this paper has just been published in the Journal of Affective Disorders, with uh, official uh, date for release is in January. Thank you.